Let me show you some clips from a main watercolour video lesson on how to paint a very colourful parrot. Let's get started. So well, this is the colour I've been using as you know, which is that um, alizarin crimson burnt umber with a touch of the lamp black and cerulean blue added into that. So what I've done, I've added a little bit of that now into this colour, just in one corner of it. So it's more on the blue side than the red side. Again, still quite milky, as in consistency. We'll go darker in a bit, and then we can start to think about where some of these areas are around here. Just keep, as I say, looking at the photo and just make sure you can see where all these little creases go. If you're not sure, retrace it over the top, make sure your painting's nice and dry first, obviously. Just put your uh, reference photo back over the top and your transfer paper, your graphite paper underneath that. Then you can reposition everything again. If you've lost all your reference marks, which I know I very often do. I like to try and work out where they go, because it does kind of test your skills a little bit more that way. And a few more into there. Again, we will lightly soften this because I don't want it too sharp, these lines, because they're not that sharp on the actual photo. They're slightly blurry, and we can do that easily enough by just softening it back a little bit. And you know how to do that using our size 5 brush. And a few more in there. Okay. Now down to the darker colour. So this is that blacky blue, the creamy mix. We're going to start doing the same thing now with this colour. That's it. I'm constantly looking at that photograph. I know I've said it many times, but I really am. Just to ensure that these curves are going in the right direction. Because this will show the strength and the structure of the beak. Is what we need it to do. Okay, so I'm just using my size one here. Now all I've done, you saw in the video, what I've done, I left a gap where there's a mark obviously, a, I don't know if it's a join or anything on the beak there, just inside the beak. So I just left that gap first and then softened it down with a clean damp brush. Just by taking the clean damp brush right down that gap and that just knocks it right back. Now we need to probably go a little bit more than that, yeah? So it's still a bit too defined. We need to just so it's just about kind of visible, which it is at the moment. So I build up the darkest areas now at the bottom of the beak. I know it's a bit of a process painting the beak, but it's an enjoyable one. Always allow more time than anything you'll need when you're painting. I always do. Because you'll be, you'll be surprised sometimes how long something takes. And like me, when you get into the painting, when you really get involved in what you're doing, Time flies, it really does fly. I'm here. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Like a breathalyzer. There we go. And lift. And there you go. That's those two little marks just down the bottom of the beak. Eee. There you go. I love it when it works. I really do. They actually start from, from the middle here, don't they? And you can see the way they tend to fan out and around like a clock face. As I said before, but they, they that's how they tend to work here. And they're all seeing patches. So this area here is its own little patch. Okay, so that will do for that area there, just about, as in the reds. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up a little bit of blacky blue. Okay, remember we got this here. So lamp black, I've got a thicker version just there a lot. There's a little bit of blue in that. So lamp black, and I think we had in this one, let me think. Yes, indigo. So lamp black and indigo, but more black than blue. And then we can start adding some of these details in to the center, right to the middle here. But do this in the finest of marks, barely touching the paper. I haven't overloaded the brush. So I'm going to work down towards the chest area now. But what I need to do first is just define, kind of map out where some of these areas go. So I'm just going to work out where some of these are. I mean, I could reposition, if I wanted to, the outline drawing over the top. If you remember, I'm just trying to find that out for you. So I could just get the drawing, oops, upside down pull, and reposition that back over the top and redraw those marks in. But no, let's just work them out instead because it's a bit more uh, 
much much better for you to try and fathom things out a little bit more. Um, but if you find it easier, obviously just do that. That's not a problem at all. But I'm just trying to work it out while we go. Now these are individual folds of feathers, aren't they? Or individual feathers coming down the side here. Now these have got very jagged edges as well. Trying to see where they all go. I think I'll just brighten up some of the back feathers while I've got this colour on the brush. And that will do. Right, now for the darkest colour for the reds. Now, for the darkest colour, all we're going to simply do is add a little bit of black paint to that red. So, where's my mixing brush? Just there. So I've got some black in here, look. I'm going to try away from the main kind of well of paint to begin with. I don't want it too black, but I think that's not bad as it stands, actually. So what we're looking at for that, where's my test paper a minute? Always like to test the paint out, you know that. So that's what we're looking at. Now if I watered that down, you should see the colour within there. See what I mean? So you can just see the red in there and the black, the way they work together. So it's kind of a rich black, if you know what I mean. That's what we're looking for. So we're going to use that for the darkest areas now. And that's going to make up a little bit more so we can make a start. Just into there. Reinforce that one. Do that. Uh, it looks like a vein line, doesn't it? So that one there. And I think we're about there. Okay. Right, as I say at this stage, you can fiddle as much as you want to fiddle. But all we need to do is add a few little white highlights onto the paper. So that's going to be on the back of the wing. I mentioned that earlier on. But as you know, I'm here to help. I'm here to kind of kind of guide you, hold your hand if you wish, uh, on the painting process. And uh, you know very well to put a comment down below there, just below this post, below this video. And you know very well that I'll do my best to help if you've got any issues or any problems, okay? Now the real full-time video of this parrot tutorial is now available on my online school. Where I'll guide you step by step in over three and a quarter hours of real-time video on how to paint this parrot in watercolour. Now if you fancy having a go at one of my watercolour lessons for free, I've got one on there just for you on how to paint a robin in watercolour. Now if you enjoyed this video, please click on subscribe down below. Click on become a patron and I'll see you there.